Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for take so we created the android 13 based project elixir custom rom video few days back you can check that video from the icard i was using that rom from few days and it's one of the best custom rom available for the not 2 but with the release of the project elixir developer sekel mondol has also released the pixel experience first build at the end of the october month but because of my busy schedule, I was not able to create the review video of that first build. But new update build of my favorite Pixel S Prince is released by developer on the 14th of the November. So today we'll flash the ROM and we'll review its performance if we totaling, what's working, features, bugs with my final verdict. Flashing is simple like we did for the older builds, download the full ROM. Remove the lock screen security, boot your phone into the TWRP. You must use the new TWRP 3.7, its link is given under the video description and flashing process is given in iCard video. Now in the TWRP tap install flash the new Pixel Experience Plus build. Now tap wipe, select format and type yes. Now tap reboot to the system. So all the things are done here. Now without further ado, let's get started. On a new adventure on a new As you did the clean flash, first you need to go through the setup process. Clean flash is recommended to avoid the conflicts or the bugs in the ROM because it's a new Android 13 build. Phone booted to the latest Pixel launcher with the black stock wallpaper. Now let's check out the about phone. Here you can see this is the new Android 13 based Pixel Experience build with new Google Smart Radio clock strike which reveals after dialing the clock to the 1. Security patch is of latest November 2022. Kernel version is 4.14.295. Kernel is now fully upstreamed to the latest stable kernel sources. Build date of ROM is 14th November 2022. It's synchronized with the latest Android 13 R13 release candidate sources. So everything is up to date in this new update of Pixel S Friends Plus. So first of all, let's check out the performance of the new Pixel S Friends Plus and we will compare it with the Project Elixir ROM. Initial impressions of the ROM are pretty well. Everything is gliding on the fingertips. Apps opening, closing, switching between the applications, scrolling, RAM management, all the things are fluid and furious. Using the Pixel S Friends is the extremely pleasant experience for me. But did it really seen in the numerical results of the Geekbench? So let's find it out. I ran the Geekbench and for single core, I got the score of 840 and for multi core, the results are 2370. If you check the project the results, there we got the amazing results like 839 for the single core and 3048 for the multi core. So multi core results are pretty low on the Pixel S friends as compared to the project Elizir. Still, to confirm these results, I ran the Geekbench one more time, still, results are same. For the GP performance on the OpenGL drives, I got the score of 4993, while on the project Elixir results was 5111. Here again results are slightly lower in comparison with the project Elixir results. For the Vulcan graphics, we got the score of 4226, while for the project Elixir, we got the score of 4310. So overall in every segment, project Elixir is better than the Pixel Experience Plus. But maybe for the better battery backup, developer has clocked down the performance of the CPU in the Pixel experience. But in day-to-day -day uses, I did not feel too much lag or the jitters in the ROM on the 90 hertz. It's gliding like butter. So another important part come here, how is the CPU performance in the intensity task? To confirm this, I ran the CPU throttling test. We all know that stock Oxonos is best in terms of CPU throttling. It has always given me more than 90% of result except in the build of C07. I ran the test on the 20 threads and when I stopped the test after 7 minutes, I got the score of 89% which is really impressive because here we ran the test more than 5 minutes. So obviously heat will be more and throttling will be definitely happens at the higher temperatures. Still ROM managed to handle the task with the minimal throttling. Temperature of device was rising up to 50 degrees Celsius which was settled down immediately after stopping the test. As this is the first build, I checked all the things like the Wafa and the Wafa hotspot, both are working well, but there is no setting to change the Wafa bandwidth like the 2.5 and 5 Hz. Bluetooth audio is working in the earphones, so it's supposed the device specific HD audio codecs like the LDAC along with the SBC and the SCC codecs. Audio is loud enough in the speakers and the earphones. 
GPS is working fine along with the NFC. So the auto brightness bug that I was facing in all the custom ROM is seems fixed in this build. It's working perfect now. Fingerprint is working good. Its setup is seamless and it's enough fast without any brightness issue while unlocking the phone. Now developer has added the face unlock in all Android 13 builds. It's working blazing fast with the good accuracy. I done the checkup of all the sensors like the accelerometer, light, proximity, magnetometer, compass, gyroscope all are working fine. Instead of that I also checked the ear proximity, ear speaker, microphone, multi-touch and display. All the things are working great. My major intention to check this all and to show you is that all the basic functionality should not be left behind while testing the ROM because it will ruin your custom ROM experience after flashing it. Now it comes the most important part that is the safety net. It's getting passes so all the banking and security related application will work in the ROM. Widevine is on L1 certificate so you can use Amazon and Netflix application at the full HD resolution. ROM storage is encrypted. You can check it under the security tab of the phone. Google Photo Unlimited backup is working as this is the pure pixel experience ROM. Always on display is working with the double tap to wake and sleep on the lock screen. Now it comes the camera, ROM has the Lineage OS Aperture Camera application which is pretty basic camera application. So I downloaded and installed the Google Gcam MGC build. It has night sight mode working, portrait for the both the front and the back camera is working. But the video recording for the slow motion is not working here. Time lapse recording is working fine. Panorama and Photosphere more both are working. 4K 60fps recording still not working in this camera application. Video stabilization is working, but unfortunately ultrawide camera angle modes are broken. It's causing the black screen in the camera application if you try to access this setting. So camera is still major issue while using the custom ROM on the OnePlus Nord 2 because most of the important features are not working in the Gcam and its quality is not as good as stock Oxynos camera. So we desperately need the fully working stock Oxynos camera for the custom ROM but still it's not possible because of the closer sources of the OnePlus camera application. So what about the vibration motor haptic feedback? Still the haptic on this ROM is not more refined like the stock Oxygen OS. It's still hard but it's better than the initial builds of the custom ROMs. What are the features in the ROM? As the Pixel Experience is the pure vanilla ROM but this is the plus addition so we guess the core recording functionality in the call dialer. Under display setting we guess the live display and the color modes. Smooth display toggle, double tap to wake and sleep toggles. New advanced pocket mode, under the system tab we guess the OnePlus setting which has the different tunables like the charging meter control, high brightness mode, force 90 hz toggle, vibration strength control. Under the buttons and status bar we guess the all the old custom features that we are using from the long time. Now it's time to see what is not working or the bugs in the ROM. OnePlus signature alert slider is not working in the ROM. This bug was also persist in the project elixir. There is no setting to enable the voice activated Google Assistant in the ROM, so you can't activate the Google Assistant using the voice control commands like the Hey Google. But you can use the swipe gestures to activate the Google Assistant. ROM comes with the OT update under the system setting, but it doesn't working, it's showing the network error even though we have the stable network connection. Except these bugs, I didn't found any bugs. Current custom ROM are more mature as compared to the old ROM as the development is going good. As per the users and the user experience, Pixel experience is my favorite custom ROM because it is giving the pure Pixel phone experience to the device without any boatware and the useless customization stuffs that most of the custom ROM has added. It's a lightweight ROM with the best battery life than any other custom ROM so I definitely recommend you this version. That's it for today guys, if you think I helped you through this video then please do like and share, subscribe, press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Until then signing off, take care, bye bye.